Welcome to Colorful Coding. How may I help you? It's weird to see our face inside Unity and that's what we're going to do today because it's a great way to understand how face augmentation works in AirCore and ARKit. This is the workflow we'll go through today. Face augmentation subsystem is imp imported once you import AR Face Manager inside AR Session Origin. Remember, here we will put all the managers, four points, planes and so on. Each of those imports a subsystem for us. AR Face Manager gives us events about changes that happen with its trackables and gives us access to them as well. In this case, the trackables are of type AR Face. AR Face gives us access to attributes such as the mesh components and the position for the, of the eyes. We will export the mesh created by our foundation in real time in a JSON file and the animation on each update callback on the AR Face Manager. In a new scene, we will then read that JSON file, generate our mesh, and then update it using the animation information inside the core routine. In the end, we will also give a look on how we'll be able to record the sound. Let's get going. So as usual, we're going to first import AR Foundation. For this, we first open the package manager and we are going to import AR Foundation and AR Core XR plugin or ARKit XR plugin depending on what you need. Also, if you're on iOS, you also have to import ARKit face tracking separately. That's because if you were to import it in Air Foundation but not use it, Apple Store sees you've imported face and asks you why you have facial augmentation but not told the user about any feature with it and get your app refused when uh, uploaded. Then delete the main camera and import Air Session Origin and Air Session into your scene. Go to File, Build Settings, switch to Android, open Player Settings, put a company name and the product name, put them also here at the package name, remember to remove Vulkan from Graphics API, and set the minimum API level to 24. Done, you have a basic AR Core app, you can actually build it on your uh, mobile phone and test it right now, although you'll only see your camera and nothing special. Now you'll have to add AR Face Manager inside AR Session Origin, create a new game object and add AR Face here. Also attach AR Face Mesh Visualizer here and this script makes sure you will see the mesh on the front of the face. For this you will also need a mesh filter and a mesh renderer. Don't forget to add some material to your mesh renderer. Save it as a prefab and add it here inside Face Prefab inside Air Face Manager. Don't forget to delete the game object. And there you have it, a basic face augmentation app. Now let's get to the actual work. We've added a button inside the canvas here that when pressed it starts recording your face and when pressed again it stops and saves everything to a file. All the behavior is done here inside Face Recorder, inside Air Session Origin. Here we'll check when our button is pressed and whenever this happens, we basically toggle a boolean. If we start recording, we switch the color of the button to green and we hook or unhook the onFacesChanged method to the AR Face Manager face changed event. Whenever we stop recording, we change the color of the button back, we unhook the onFacesChanged method from this event and we try to save the file. On faces change the method carries with it an object that tells us everything about all the faces that were updated, added or removed. We only care for now about the updated faces since we assume we'll only have one face in the camera at the moment. Every time a face is updated we save all the information we need inside a custom object of a class we created and store it inside the dictionary based on its trackable ID right here. Each trackable has a unique global ID inside AR Foundation. Let's now look into what we need to store. The game object created by the AR face has a position and rotation. We'll store that transforms position and rotation inside our own object called animation keyframe. We need to store this inside our anim keyframe class. In order to recreate the mesh, we need the vertices, we need the indices and the UVs. Uh, the vertices are basically the points of the 3D mesh 
the UVs are the way the texture will wrap on it and the indices are basically how the triangles are created of the mesh. For instance, if you have 1, 2, 3, 4 vertices, we can store 1, 2, 3, 1, 3, 4 and the two triangles will be created by the game engine. For creating a mesh, we'll also need information about the surface normals, but we have a method to automatically take care of it. The UVs and the indices are always the same for the mesh, so we'll store them in a parent class and not in the keyframe. So to look at it again, we store a parent object with UVs and indices we need for creating the mesh and a list of keyframes. Each keyframe has a timestamp, a position, a rotation and the new position of all the vertices. We make sure every class is serializable and each field has serialized field tag on it. Vector2 and Vector3 are not serializable by default, so we created our own class, uh, which is basically the same thing, but it's serializable. Useful tip, to do things easier, we use select, which is a method inside system link. c -sharp's link capabilities are basically a set of methods that make uh, working with list easier. There's a link in the description if you want to know more about it. It's basically a cleaner way than to use an actual for loop to convert each member of the list and they have lots of other useful things inside it. The last step is to save everything to a file in the end. JSON utility is a really easy to use class since uh, face anime exports is serializable right now. JSON utility is also very easy to use for loading the file from JSON text to the actual object. So that's what we use. We save everything inside application persistent data path uh, since we want to use it on multiple mobile OS's and also on computer. They don't have the same file system so we let unit handle this one. Just log the file path uh, so you'll find easier your objects. Now everything is saved. So basically every time a face is updated we look on how its mesh elements change and we save each of those elements inside our JSON. After this, we're going to be ready to load it and create a mesh out of it and update it frame by frame. Now that everything is saved, we need to look at how to load all this. This is the JSON, we found it inside the application.persistentdatapath. For our use case, we'll manually import it inside Unity Assets and use it as a text asset. If an object is serializable, it can be deserialized really easy using JSON utility from JSON, we put here the class we want to transform it into and we access the text using textasset.text. All this behavior is inside a new game object that has the mesh generator script, but for this we need a mesh renderer with some material and a mesh filter that's going to be empty and with that we are going to fill it with our new mesh. For this we basically do mesh equals new mesh and we put it inside our mesh filter, that's it. However, it is empty. Useful tip for testing your methods, we use context menu and the title here on a public method. And if we right click on our function, we can see them here. It's much easier for me to test methods like this for putting buttons on the screen and then delete them or hide them. As I said before, a mesh is consisted of vertices, UVs, indices for triangles and normals, which will let Unity calculate automatically calling this method. So we assign the mesh.vertices, mesh.uv, mesh.triangles. We make sure they are in the correct uh, format. So vertices ask for an array of vector, free. So we do the conversion here using our link you select. UV is an array of vector2, again select and we map them to vector2. And triangles is an array of integers and we just uh, change the list of int to array. Then we recalculate the normals. Once we start the animation, we start a new coroutine. We use a coroutine because it works asynchronously and uh, it goes forever without blocking our uh, workflow here. And we can also make it work uh, 24 times a second. What we basically do is uh, update the transforms position, transforms rotation, and we change the vertices from the mesh while also leaving the UVs, the triangles and the normals the same. That's basically it, let's uh, look for a test. So we have the face mesh here, uh, we have here the JSON, we just right click and create mesh. Here it is, it looks like this 
and then if you right click and start animation you see it started looking okay This doesn't have much to do with the face augmentation, but for our use case we need to store the voice somehow. You can check the code on git on exactly how to do this, but here is everything in a nutshell. To use the microphone, we call microphone.start, we tell it to use the default device, to not loop, to record for exactly 100 seconds, and uh, with that frequency. We now take that clip. Uh, we get microphone uh, position which tell us for how long the audio was playing. We first trim the clip since for most case, use cases it's less than 100 seconds and then we try to save it right here. For trimming a clip what we do is use the position and an audio is basically a float array. So we take the position by number of channels and we know that's the exact uh, length. And then we simply copy the clip's data only on the size we need it of. This is basically a code copied from the Unity Answers. I left a, a link right here. And for saving, it's a bit more complicated, but luckily for us, I found some code here on gist.github. There's the link, of course, here. And uh, what we do is we save it, giving it a file name and an audio clip. I actually encourage you to read everything here since it's uh, very interesting to see how exactly a WAV file is formed and uh, what exactly Unity does to record sound. But yeah, that's it in a nutshell. The export file is pretty big right now, it's about 5 megabytes. That's the biggest problem of our application right now. And that's mostly because we transfer the motion of each vertex at a time. What we can do at first is use a different format. JSON is very human readable, however it takes a lot of space. We can, if you look here we have XYZ on each one even though we know exactly what it is since JSON cannot store matrices, only arrays of objects. So a solution would be to use other formats like CSV or uh, binary serializing the class uh, and so on. Another idea would be to stop storing every vertex new position but always check with the last frame and if a vertex did not move more than a threshold, just ignore it. And the third solution would be to use blend shapes. As I already told, it's not easy to transfer vertex motion from a mesh to another. However, while working at this, I found a better way. iOS supports controlling a custom mesh with face augmentation. But how does it do that? In the examples, we can see how it actually works. We have a mesh that has all these blend shapes. A blend shape is basically a slider that can control uh, basic animations. A blend shape is a custom translation of the vertices of a mesh, stored in different meshes usually. Using custom sliders we can then blend between the two states. We can create such a mesh and export it with whatever 3D editor you wish such as Blender or Maya. You can find this example on AR Foundation's Git account. It's very important to keep the naming of them. And what we can do is again listen when updates come for the face and store the blend shapes value instead of the vertex position. Then we'll just load the values and use them on our mesh as we did with the vertices. This is pretty good because 1. It's more readable than the mesh's components. 2. Smaller files since we have less elements. And 3. You, you can customize your blend shapes. You can make uh, crazy looking faces custom wrinkles on the face, and so on. For this, you can download the example on Git and look on ARKit Blend Shape Visualizer script, and you'll understand better how it works. Yep, so that's about it. We've given AR face augmentation a good look by learning how to do our own little bit of motion tracking. We've learned how to listen to updates, what an AR face consists of, and how to disassembly and assembly your own mesh procedurally. This is how most procedural meshes are created. We also had a short look on how Unity and microphones work and got a taste of a few more advanced features such as ARKit subsystems blend shape coefficients. As always, I'm open to new suggestions and questions. If you find it interesting, please also watch the new videos on which I'll make my very own trading card game VR for Oculus Quest and of course, like and subscribe if you want to be up to date. Have a fun day!